Well, in a shocking incident today, a little girl died after she was beaten to death and the culprits are none other than her very own guardians. It was a gloomy sight at a small locality in Dasarahalli. This is the house outside of which four-year-old Prahalika was seen playing till yesterday. But this morning, the neighbours discovered that she passed away in a hospital nearby. Though the news came as a shock, many were not surprised. According to the neighbours, the girl was often brutally beaten by her mother and her paramour. They had recently moved into the house in Dasarahalli and did not want to take care of Prahalika. She was often seen with bruise marks and black eyes when she played outside the house. The neighbours questioned them about the bruises on the child's body and were even asked to vacate the house by the owner. <laughs> Prahalika was again brutally beaten last night and this time it claimed her life. She was immediately rushed to the hospital to avoid suspicion. But the doctors at Columbia Asia Hospital were shocked by the state in which she was brought. The little girl had sustained several burn marks and bruises all over her body. Both her legs were broken. The mother Amrutamma and her paramour Bhaskar Naidu were immediately taken into custody and a case was registered with the Amrita Halli police. Uh, the reason behind the assault, uh, he says, is uh, that she spilled kerosene in the bathroom. Uh, for that reason, he's beat her up with uh, a wooden uh, stick. And uh, the whole body bears injury of uh, that assault. And then uh, there has been hemorrhage in the brain also. The neighbors uh, there say that he kept on assaulting her uh, day in, day out. So yesterday it had become fatal. The family hails from Andhra Pradesh and Prahalika's biological father succumbed to swine flu. This is when the mother is said to have developed an intimate relationship with Bhaskar. They have confessed to their crime, stating that the girl was physically abused so that she would return to their home in Andhra. Vishnu Prasad, News 9, Bengaluru. Well, imagine walking into a hospital for a surgery and walking out with surgical instruments inside your body. Well, this may seem bizarre, but for one woman, it has turned out to be her worst nightmare. This is the story of how doctors at the Mangalore Nursing Home set a new precedent for medical negligence with their latest karma. Can you trust your doctor? How safe are you in your doctor's care? What you see here is the X-ray report of a 37-year-old woman. The woman is a resident of Maddur village in Mangalore. For four years, this woman lived her life without realizing that there was a pair of scissors inside her body. And there was no reason for her to suspect that she had a surgical instrument inside her body. After all, how could she assume that she was a victim of a case of extreme medical negligence? To tell you how the scissors ended up inside her body, we must take you back to 2010, when it all began. Victim diagnosed with tumour in her uterus. But surgery only worsened the problem. All was well after the surgery for the poor victim, but a few months later, she began experiencing severe abdominal pain. 
When she went back to the hospital, she was given a generous dose of painkillers and sent back home. Every time the pain heightened, pills were given to suppress the symptoms. But no diagnosis was ever conducted. The source of the pain was never identified until last night. Last night, the victim was rushed to a private diagnostic center after she experienced insufferable pain. When doctors performed an X-ray, they were in for a shock. the surgeon who operated on her tumor had stitched her back up completely oblivious of the fact that a pair of sharp scissors were left behind in her body for four years, the scissors remained in her body and the victim had no clue. And it is Surgeon Purnima Nayak who is responsible for the victim's pitiable condition. Enraged upon realizing what had happened, the victim and her relatives rushed to Mangalore Nursing Home to demand an explanation. But instead of answering their questions, Purnima Nayak tried to hush up the matter. When that did not work, she played it safe and tried to place the blame onto her subordinates. Uh, negligence agide uh, anta heli it is confirmed that something is found uh, x ray alli kandu bandide kattare untu anta heli but adu yava time alli alli baaki agide gottilla yakandre patient ge eradu sala operation agide iga naavu maadida surgery area dalli kandu bandilla adu adu hotte du um, eda bagadalli eda bagada side alli kelagade untu so alli irbekadre first haakida avarige gaaya bere hospital alli kelage adda gaaya haakidare so possible that first hakida gaya dali alli baaki uldu side alli uldir bahudu ondu possibility ashte en idru odu open maadi aada mele note bek aagthade elli ide ante heli Ironically, Mangalore Nursing Home is just a stone's throw away from the residence of Health Minister UT Khadar, who until now seems oblivious to the medical blunders that occur here on a daily basis. But with such bizarre cases of negligence coming to light, isn't it time to take some action, Minister Sar? Rajesh Puttur, News 9, Mangalore. Moving on, the pressure on Modi Sarkar to rescue trapped Indians in Iraq is only growing. To battle this pressure, the external affairs minister is knocking on every door to get whatever help she can to ensure their safe re return. Here's a report. 39 Indians still in captivity. Can Modi rescue the trapped Indians? In view of the growing pressure on the Indian government to rescue trapped victims in Iraq, External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj held a meeting with the delegates to Gulf countries to find a solution. Sushma Swaraj, who returned from a successful foreign visit to Bangladesh two days back, held a meeting with the envoys from Gulf countries for a speedy evacuation operation of Indians captured in Iraq. The meeting also included the ambassadors of Gulf countries posted in India. Along with them, Ajit Doval, the National Security Advisor, Ajit Seth, the Cabinet Secretary and officials of the National Crisis Management Committee were part of the meeting. They also discussed on the already set up camp offices that facilitated the departure of 10,000 Indians from Iraq. The meeting came a day after MEA spokesperson Syed Akbaruddin assured that the evacuation work of the Indians is in progress. He also asserted that they will set up camps to provide travelling documents and even free air tickets to the victims. 
Meanwhile, the families of the captured Indians in Iraq will meet the external minister to express their dissatisfaction with the steps being taken by the Indian government. The situation is getting worse each day for the Indians caught in the Iraq strife. Will this effort by Sushma Swaraj prove beneficial to the trapped victims? We sure hope so. A news nine report. BTEC students of Delhi University are finally in for some good news as UGC has paid heed to their request to bring clarity over the issue. After Delhi University, UGC makes a U-turn. UGC has finally permitted Delhi University to continue with the four-year course for students who enrolled in BTEC in 2013. The decision comes a day after the agitated BTEC students staged a demonstration outside UGC's office demanding not to scrap the FYUP for their course. The FYUP for BTEC will continue but the present batch will be the last one to pass out from DU as the university has scrapped both BTEC and BMS course. While BTEC students are in for some relief, the fate of BMS students continues to be uncertain. DU has still not decided the fate of BMS course that was under FYUP the previous academic year. Earlier today, around hundreds of BMS students gathered outside HRD minister's residence to protest against the scrapping of FYUP. They even tried to enter the minister's residence but were stopped by the police around the gate. The agitated students threaten to move court if the concerned authority doesn't take care of their interest. We have a lot of damage हमारा जो कि कोर्स एक प्रोफेशनल कोर्स बताया जा रहा था डीयू का सिर्फ एक लोटा प्रोफेशनल कोर्स था वो अब खत्म करा जा रहा है आगे से और हमें इससे काफी नुकसान होगा क्योंकि जब हम नौकरी के लिए जाएंगे तो हमारा पहला और आखरी बैच होगा तो हमें आगे नौकरियां नहीं मिलेंगी क्योंकि किसी ने इस कोर्स के बारे में सुना भी नहीं होगा Meanwhile, Delhi University will start its admission procedure for 2014 to 15 from July 1st under the 3 year program. A news 9 report.